My name is Eric Worre, and for almost 30 years I've been an entrepreneur, struggling at times, but ultimately succeeding. As a best-selling author, speaker, and business owner, I've spent my entire career helping millions of people around the world to become entrepreneurs, and I believe strongly that there is, in fact, a better way when it comes to how we make a living. The career landscape has changed dramatically, and many are still working in a model that is completely out of date. What worked for previous generations isn't working as well for people today. In this film, we're going to explore three important questions. First, what's really going on in our working world today? Second, in this new economy, is it better to become an entrepreneur or is it safer to work for someone else? And third, if a person decides to become an entrepreneur and start their own business, how can they do it without taking on massive risk? To help in this journey, I've brought together some of the greatest experts and thought leaders in the field of entrepreneurship to share the real facts with you. My intention is to give you new information that will allow you to make choices that are not limited by an old, outdated model. Let's start by understanding what's going on in our working world today. Let's look at unemployment. 30, 40% of the people are honestly not working, but would be working. What our government does is if you haven't found a job in six months, we don't call you unemployed. We pretend you dropped out of the labor force. I've often said that unemployment, particularly structural unemployment, that's unemployment due to technological changes, is the first sign of economic growth. Think of it, 10 people live in an island. They go out every day and fish. One day, new technology shows up. A missionary brings them a net. Now, using the net, one pilots the boat, one throws the net, two fishermen can do all the work 10 used to. That's a 500% increase in productivity two doing the work at 10 in one day. You don't have to learn a lot to learn how to throw a net instead of throw a fishing line. The island's got a big problem, 80% unemployment. But the island still has all the wealth of the fish because the two people produce as much fish as 10 did. Now, of course, looking back in history, these changes used to take thousands of years. And during that time, we went into farming and transportation. Some of us became doctors and some teachers and lawyers. And we developed all these new professions and new manufacturing jobs. Today, these changes are occurring literally in one day when a new technological advance occurs, and we don't have the social structures to deal with it or to retrain the unemployed people. So one of the things that I think is interesting as I travel across the country and really travel around the world is the way that we work and the way we get paid for work is changing pretty dramatically. On a global basis, everything is being turned upside down because of the rapidly advancing technologies, uh, they are eliminating many jobs, and we have been left with many people not prepared for the jobs that exist. A lot of demand in public companies was to squeeze out all the fat and to get just as much margin as we possibly could, and fat equals humans. So this idea of job security and information age is so obsolete but it's still taught inside our school system, and that's where the problem starts. There's no financial education in the school system, and people are still trained to be employees to work for that paycheck. This is a chart on the middle class. What's happening in the middle class, those who went to school, their incomes have been coming down for years. I feel sorry for the person who dreads going to work, who is sick to their stomach on Monday morning, who hates their alarm clock, who gets a little glimmer of hope on a Wednesday because it's hump day and says, thank God it's Friday. And they live for those two days a week where they get to be themselves and get, they don't have to be around people they don't, they don't like and they don't have to play the political game in the office and they don't have to live this half life. Um, the person that works 50 weeks a year just to be able to have the two weeks for vacation. And you know what happens to most of them nowadays? They don't have a vacation. They have a staycation. They have time off of work, but they don't get to go where they want to go. I feel sorry for that group of people because there's a better way. They just don't know it. The basis for their life is worry. I'm, I'm worried 
you know, maybe I'll get fired. I'm worried maybe my company will go out of business. I'm worried I can't keep split, spinning the plates on paying the bills. I'm worried about how do I send my kids to college. I'm worried, what if the transmission of my car breaks? That's, you know, two or three, I can't fix it. People live in a, in a sea of worry and it eats at them. It's time to look in the mirror and say, it's not the economy, it's my economy. It's my little world of where I am. I need to improve. I'm not going to wait for the economy to come back because, frankly, the economy is doing great in this country. The average household income in the United States is approximately $50,000 a year, what they call the middle class. To reach the top 25% of income earners, you'd need to earn at least $90,000 a year. To reach the top 10% would be a household income of $140,000 the top 5%, 190,000, and to be in the top 1%, you'd need a combined household income of at least $380,000 a year. So here's the question. What do you think would give you the best chance to move up and get to the top 10%, the top 5%, the top 1% or beyond? In my opinion, and in the opinion of many, many experts, the answer is to become an entrepreneur to become your own boss. The spirit of the entrepreneur is to be a risk taker and to be resourceful and unstoppable and to have a vision of yourself beyond where you are and not willing to settle for life as it is. Think about the great entrepreneurs. They're visionary. They have heart. They're willing to do today what others want so they can do tomorrow what others can't. Personally, I don't think of the new economy, the old economy. I create my own economy. The entrepreneur's in control. I decide what the economy is going to be like. In the world of entrepreneurship, there are no limits. You can make as much as you want, depending on how much you want to work and how smart you are and how great a team you put together. There's no more lifetime rewarding business than being an entrepreneur. Why in America, where anyone could be anything, would people want to give up their freedom and become effectively a modern day slave, told shut up and be here every morning at 7.30, leave at 5.30 and do what I tell you. And most people say, I'd love to be my own boss. 70% of Americans would love to be their own boss, according to recent polls. But they don't know how to get there. Because what are you going to do? One, you could buy an existing business. If somebody's selling an existing business, you have to ask why. <laughs> Usually because it's probably hard. Uh, it's probably not making as much money as they hope. Two, they could buy a franchise. A little less risk, proven system. But it's expensive to be able to do that. Three, they could start something from scratch. And that's where a lot of people feel like, I don't have the, the chops to do it. I don't have the money. I don't have the, the product idea. I don't have the expertise. I don't have whatever it's going to take to be able to get there. And I can't risk my family to do it. So fourth, they could become an investor. A lot of people in this town invest uh, to try and figure out a way but you got to be pretty smart with that game too right people that start their own business they spend a lot of money they spend a lot of time a lot of effort to get things started and the more you invest on the upfront the harder you typically work at it in our search for a better way to make a living we've come to the conclusion that becoming an entrepreneur is actually safer than being an employee and through our look at the entrepreneurial options, one particular path kept coming up from expert after expert. And I think most people will find it surprising because it's certainly a non-traditional business model. That model is for people to start their own business and become an entrepreneur through the creation of a network marketing business. Some people call it direct selling because the product is being sold directly from the manufacturer to the end consumer, cutting out the middlemen. Other people call it multi-level marketing or MLM because there are multiple levels of commissions paid. The most common term today is network marketing because network marketing best describes using a large group of independent distributors, independent entrepreneurs to move a product or service more efficiently. So my friend here, Donald Trump and I, we always write about the network marketing industry. And the reason we support the network marketing industry is because it really is a business school for entrepreneurs because most people come out of school looking for a paycheck. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I went to network marketing like that. 
I think if it didn't exist, we should invent it. It is that good. I think direct selling is a great way to do business today. It's uh, very easy to get into that industry and you can be self-employed, be in effect an entrepreneur. A traditional company will spend up to 50% of their total revenue on marketing. Network marketing companies use a different approach. Instead of having all that extensive marketing expense, they utilize a network of independent distributors to do the marketing for them. Now why do they do this? First, because word of mouth advertising is so much more effective today than traditional media advertising. Second, some products need to be explained or demonstrated and an independent salesperson can do that more effectively than an ad campaign. Third, it's completely efficient. The company only pays for the marketing of their product if a sale happens and not before. Imagine if Amazon allowed you to become an independent distributor and paid out 40% of its revenue to that distributor group. All you had to do as a distributor was recommend a product and if a person bought it on Amazon, Amazon would take care of all the logistics and you'd get paid for bringing the customer. Now imagine you got paid for every purchase that customer made for the rest of their lives. Well, Amazon doesn't offer this option, but network marketing companies do. 85% of all buying decisions in our society are made as a result of word of mouth or reputation. We're recommending things to each other all the time. You know, who's your dentist? Who's your doctor? Who's your lawyer? What detergent, you know, are you using? What legal system are you using? What product are you using? We're, we're talking to each other about the things that we love anyway. When you go into a big box retailer, you're lucky if the clerk looks you in the eye, much less gives you any detailed or accurate information about what you're purchasing. Uh, so, of course, this personal information, this education coming from a friend, a neighbor, a relative, or even a stranger, but who, one who has experience with the product, is extraordinarily valuable. As a matter of fact, uh, network marketing can educate consumers probably better than any other form of marketing. It certainly can do better than advertising because advertising usually has a certain hype to it and you can only get limited information. So, you know, network marketing trumps advertising. The keys to network marketing is providing an opportunity for the masses to get involved. Providing an opportunity for the average person who doesn't have the resources to start their own business. All of this so far is fairly straightforward. But network marketing offers another benefit. And it's this benefit that makes it so interesting for entrepreneurs. Network marketing allows a distributor to build their own network of other distributors and then compensates them on the sales created by that entire group. Direct selling is, at its base, very simple. It's the sale of a product or service to an individual on a face-to-face, one-on-one basis, just the way we're talking right now. But there's an important element as well, and that's the offering in con conjunction with that sale of product, the offering of an opportunity, an opportunity for someone to make something of themselves. According to the Direct Selling Association, if you add up all the network marketing companies around the world, they combine to do over $178 billion a year in retail sales. To give you an idea of how big that really is, the NFL, the National Football League, does approximately $9 billion a year. The music industry does a little more than $16 billion a year, and the movie industry does about $80 billion a year. Using a conservative average, network marketing companies pay their distributors about 40% of that $178 billion in the form of commissions, which adds up to more than $71 billion a year. That's almost $6 billion a month. It's almost $200 million in commissions every single day. So it's certainly working, and people are making serious money in network marketing. With the growth of the direct selling industry over the last 10, 15, 20 years, we've seen a broader understanding of the channel. We have seen more and more people getting involved in the business. So our penetration in the marketplace has increased, and thus the understanding in the marketplace of who we are has increased. And we've seen non-direct selling companies look at the direct selling model and say, something's going on there. People are making money. Companies are being profitable, individuals are being motivated, product is being delivered to market. Maybe we should explore this. Some people think only the people at the top make money. Well, let's take a look at that as well. 
in the network marketing profession, there are roughly 500 people in the world who earn over a million dollars a year. If you round that number up to two million dollars a year, that adds up to about a billion dollars a year. That takes the 71 billion dollars paid out each year down to 70 billion. So where does the rest of the money go? The vast majority goes to part-time people making anywhere from a few hundred dollars a month to many thousands of dollars a month. It goes to people who choose to make it a full-time career move and earning even more than that. Every day, people are using the money they earn through network marketing to pay off debt, have more fun, and improve the quality of their lives. Everyone I know in network marketing has been doing that since the 50s. They go to work when they want to go to work. They stop working when they want to take time with their children to have a leisurely breakfast and discuss issues and drive them to school. They go back to work when they get home, wherever they're working out of. The biggest thing that I've seen is people that have become much happier in their life. MLM has probably made more millionaires of more people in more countries. And I've spoken to them in 50, 67 countries than any other single form of business, starting from nothing. If they have a choice between working a job for the next 10 years or working a network marketing business for the next 10 years, the result of working the network marketing business will be better. How many people are involved? Approximately 16 million Americans and 96 million people around the world are currently participating in network marketing. And in a recent poll, 82% of those people report a good, very good, or excellent experience with network marketing. So people are happy. So I've taken a look at the network marketing profession and really tried to understand why so many people are confused as to the validity of this as a business. One is this pyramid shape. People get really messed up with this pyramid. Oh, it's one of those pyramid things. <laughs> so, I just think there are a lot of haters out there who really don't understand the industry and say, oh, it's a, it's a get rich quick scheme. It's a pyramid. Well, corporate America is a pyramid scheme. You know what I mean? It goes like this. You have thousands of MBAs, you know, let's say working for a Ford or General Motors or Coca-Cola. If all these MBAs are all trying to get to here, that's a pyramid. Only one guy's going to make it. You know, every 10 years, one's going to make it. Whereas you look at network market, it's like this. So you're here and your job is to develop other CEOs coming up behind you. So it's an inverse pyramid. It doesn't matter what shape the company is or the compensation plan is shaped, whether it's a circle or a pyramid or a triangle or a trapezoid, it doesn't matter. If compensation is coming primarily from recruitment, then you've got a problem. On the other hand, if an operation is basing their compensation to participants on the basis of sales, even when those sales are generated by people you've recruited, well, then you're a perfectly legitimate enterprise. That's the legal test. It's the practical test. People start talking about 99% of people in network marketing don't make any money. Well, we've talked about that over the course of this uh, journey together. Almost $200 million a day is being paid out to network marketing distributors around the world. The naysayers, the people who say that it doesn't work, are usually the ones who just don't know how to make it work for themselves. And so they're giving you an opinion and I tell people, don't confuse people's opinions with expertise, because opinions are free. And don't confuse sincerity with the truth, because people can be sincerely wrong. But here's the reality inside of network marketing. The vast majority of people that get involved in network marketing just become customers, and they get involved to be able to purchase product at a lower price. If you take a Costco as an example, if a person goes into Costco and gets a membership to Costco, so they can get a lower price on the product. We don't call that person a loser because they have a bunch of product that they walked out with with a smile on their face. Yet when some people want to take a look at network marketing, they say, well, those people, they're just using the product and they aren't earning an income, so they must be a loser. They're not a loser, they're a happy customer. That's the vast majority of people that are involved in network marketing. Now, a smaller percentage of those those people decide to go build a business. They earn 300 a month, 500 a month, 1,000, 2,000. That's the bulk of earnings in network marketing. And then there's the few that really decide to take it serious, really decide to build a large network, really work to make that network very, very productive. And those people make huge amounts of money and there's no cap.
it's light years better for people starting today than it was even five years ago. I, I think it's more widely accepted now and people understand it is a business. It is being an entrepreneur. It is being a business owner. Our belief system is based upon our evaluation of something. And frequently, if we reevaluate a situation, our belief about that situation will change. The industry has changed and it's grown up. It's totally transformed. You've got young people today uh, that have grown up with social media and they understand networks. They understand how people are connected through technology and they understand how money flows through those networks. So when they see network marketing, they don't see it the way their parents saw it. It's like when they design a computer program, uh, they design the program, then they run it, and then they go back through and they debug it. The MLM industry has been debugged. This is the day of being virtual, being able to run a business from your mobile phone. I mean, it's it's incredible. Companies are getting smarter. They're they're implementing more consumer protections. They're implementing more compliance training. They're doing more with respect to product research. If you do get involved and you make purchases of inventory, even on a voluntary basis. If you decide that this business is not for you, you can leave and have that inventory repurchased by the company. There's no other business that offers that kind of protection on a voluntary, self-regulatory basis. Life's too short to spend it living someone else's dream instead of your own. It's too short to spend it living at a fraction of your potential. Can being an entrepreneur be a challenge at times? Sure, but here's what you get in exchange. It can be yours, something that you built, something that you created, something that you made happen. This balloon represents your dream. It represents entrepreneurship. My wish for all of you is that you would reach out and grab it. The choice is up to you.